Good afternoon, fellow orchid lovers. It's Danielle here with a brief update. Just giving you a close-up of this beautiful Ranco Stylus Gigantia. Her flower spike is now in full bloom, and she's just beautiful. Uh, my other Ranco Stylus is also in bloom, and I will show you that as well. Um, but I just think that these blooms are gorgeous. So just a few quick, hopefully quick, <laughs> things I'd like to show you. Um, I know I did already update you on my Phalaenopsis, uh, but there are a few things that have happened with my Phalaenopsis since I spoke to you last. So I just wanted to share those things with you. Uh, this one in the back here, this is a no-name hybrid, and I've had her since March of last year. She had amazing roots when I purchased her, and then all of a sudden, her roots started to die back from the stem. Um, so I removed the velamen and kept the, um, whatever was rotten, I removed the velamen and I left the root and then I left whatever velamen was not rotten. And as you can see, um, March will be a year. <laughs> Her roots are still green and still hydrating the plant. So that seems to have worked. Um, she is now finally working on some new roots and she grew this leaf in my care and now uh, she's also growing this leaf. Um, this one's still growing and she's putting out another one. So I guess she's finally decided she's going to stop moping <laughs> and start growing. Uh, this one is my um, Fuller's Gold Stripe. This is one of the orchids that I bought from Hauserman Orchids, you know, originally when I first started Waterculture. And I updated you that she was starting to put out some new roots as well. She already has a pretty extensive root system, so I'm kind of surprised that she's putting out so many new roots. Um, but she is, you can see there in the back, she's putting out quite a few. And um, even in between the leaves, sorry, didn't mean to do that, she's putting out some and then, funny enough, she's putting out another leaf right there. She's not even finished growing this one, and she's putting out another one there. So, pretty cool. And then with the spike, um, this is the branch that grew in my care, and I wasn't sure if it was going to be a keiki or not. Well, it looks like it's not. It looks like it's definitely going to be a flower spike. So that's pretty exciting. Um, when I got her, it had this spike, and it had two branches on it but they kind of stalled and didn't do anything. And now this one is, this one's starting to, about to develop buds as well. The smaller one is not, but it may happen. I didn't think this one was gonna, so I'm kind of surprised about that. So we're gonna have more flowers in a couple of months on this one, maybe even a couple of weeks, how fast it's going. This one is my, um, Joy Fairy Tale, I think is how you say it. Um, she kind of stalled once I got her. This leaf was smaller than this and she kind of just sulked for a little while. Um, but now the leaf has started to grow. There's no sign of any new leaf in there, but um, her roots are starting to branch. As you can see there, isn't that great? So I'm really excited about that. Again, she seemed to be sulking for quite a while and I wasn't really sure why. <laughs> but she's starting to branch and she's starting to put out some new roots there. There is a flower spike in between those leaves that was there when I got her that has stalled. It's not brown, so I may still get it, but um, like I said, she's sulking. So she's, she's holding out on me. <laughs> Um, this is my arrogant, arrogant, <laughs> elegant Karen Aloha. <laughs> Something about that was a tongue twister for me. Um, I showed you in my last video that she was just exploding with roots, um, putting up a new leaf. So she's pretty happy. And then as I was cleaning out her vase today, I noticed she is also branching her old roots are putting out branches all over the place. You see that? So that's pretty exciting. So I'd say she's happy. Now all I need is a flower spike, lady. Where's your flower spike? 
I am keeping them in a window that gets down into um, the low 60s at night. Uh, it gets a lot of light during the day and it gets down into the low 60s at night and stays in like the low 70s during the day. So they seem to be enjoying that. This is an, another no ID hybrid that I got and she actually had decent roots for a store-bought orchid um, and she's kept them. So she's pretty happy. Um, she hasn't gotten any leaves or new roots in my care. A few of her roots are developing green tips as you can see. Um, but the main thing that she's been doing is she had this spike when I got her. She has it had pink flowers. And then I didn't cut off the spike because it wasn't turning brown. And look at that. Definitely getting an extension on that spike. At least three flowers, maybe four, that I can see. So that's pretty exciting. Never had a Phalaenopsis do that before. All of my spikes always just die back. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, these are my Fasarium orchids. I just wanted to give you a brief update with them. Uh, this is my Miltonia. She's she's growing new growth. Like there's a new growth in there that's pretty far advanced. Um, that's another new growth that's pretty far advanced. There's two more that are small. So she is growing. Um, she is getting new roots. But this portion is kind of dying back, and I don't know if that's just normal dieback on the orchid, but she's not growing as vigorously as I would hope for. But I don't have extensive experience with Miltonias, and this is a species too. So um, it may just be that that's the way this orchid is. Um, maybe the new growths have to be fully mature to get new roots. So we're gonna keep our eye on her, she's not dead. She, so, and she is putting out new growth. So the, I'm gonna take that as a good sign. Um, this is my Odontoglossum. This is the one, I. it had uh, four or five pseudobulbs when I got it and it just stalled and wasn't doing anything and I was really concerned. And then um, I cut one of the older pseudobulbs that was starting to turn mushy and sure enough, it had Fasarium. So I ended up cutting all of the pseudobulbs off of this and just leaving its newest growth. Its newest growth never matured. So this, I mean, ooh, you can kind of feel like a little bit in there that maybe there's somewhat of a pseudobulb, but it never moved past this. It has stopped growing. However, it did push out this new growth that is developing its own root system. And it does have another eye right there that seems like it could possibly want to start moving soon so you know it's going to be a long road back for this but it does look like we've managed to save it this is my oncidium sweet sugar um this was also a larger plant i cut some of the pseudobulbs off it started once i started the fasarium treatments it started to get new growths um so this new growth here that has um roots developing there that you can see if it would focus. And then this one right here has its own little new growth right there. <laughs> so a new growth with a new growth. <laughs> uh, and that also is developing roots you can see back there. And then another new growth just started here. So pretty vigorous plant. Um, the pseudobulbs are desiccating a fair amount, pushing out those new growths, but it barely has a root system so it needs everything it can take I guess to push all those new growths out but the fact that it is growing and developing roots and the roots aren't dying I'm hoping means that this orchid is going to possibly make it so that's that one uh, this is my shari baby uh, my shari baby I figured out that it had fasarium and actually this is the plant that made me test all of my um, oncidium orchids because it had a flower spike that it came with. It was growing, it was healthy, it was lovely, and then all of a sudden the flower spike died and the plant went downhill really fast. So I, I did like major surgery and I cut it apart and most of it had a very distinct uh, purple ring. Uh, this 
part had a new growth starting though. So I was like, oh, let me see if I can save it. That new growth has since failed, but it pushed up another one. And now this new growth, if you look right there, it's pushing out new roots. So I think, I think this portion's gonna make it. It does still have um, a little bit of a purple you can see it right there, some purple in the rhizome. I just cut that today. There was an old back bulb here that was completely desiccated, so I cut it. And you can still see that it has uh, some purple there. So I'm gonna definitely get out my fusarium treatments and start you know, treating them again uh, to see if, you know, I can just kind of give them a backup. It, it is growing new roots. It does seem to be healthy, but I don't wanna take a risk and just say, oh, well, it's fine not treated and then it dies. Uh, this was two new growths that were on the Shari baby. Again, I cut them off the mother plant and they have never matured. There is a, you know, a pseudobulb in there, but the leaves never expanded and the, the new growth never fully matured. Uh, but they both pushed out new growths. This one, it's very small and it's not vigorous. It's, it's taking forever to, to, grow at all so you know I don't know if it's gonna make it but it does have new roots so that's good this is the larger of the two new growths that I took off the mother plant and its new growth is much more vigorous and it has a much more extensive root system so possible I mean again it's gonna take probably years for this plant to bounce back but <laughs> just goes to show how resilient orchids are. I mean, the infection in this orchid was extreme and yet here she is bouncing back. So that's good. Uh, this is my Oncidium twinkle. This is the red twinkle that I got in spike. Um, she's pretty much done spiking now. A few of the older spikes, it still looks like it could bud. Um, they're not drying back from the tip so I'm gonna see what they do I as I was cutting off the old spikes I recounted there were 13 spikes <laughs> on this orchid 13 <laughs> so there was a plethora of twinkle blooms which was gorgeous and lasted for months so I was very pleased with that now this orchid is growing new growths everywhere there's one there there's one there there's one there if I turn it around there's even more can't find them right now, but they're, I mean, they're everywhere. So this is a very vigorous orchid. I'm very excited um, to have this as part of my collection. So hopefully I can keep her happy and she'll possibly spike on those new growths that she's growing now. Again, this is my Ranko Stylus Gigantia. This is the pink spotted one. Um, this orchid I keep in full water culture. Um, so she's in water all the time and she seems to really enjoy it. When I got her, she only had these types of roots and some of them were dead. And as soon as I put them in water, they got mushy and I had to take the vellum off. Um, but as soon as I did put her in water, these gray roots that you're seeing, they started exploding out of her. So there's another one here that went aerial on me. <laughs> um, but just exploding and then she started pushing out a spike and it's either her or the red one. I think it's her that has another spike in here somewhere. Um, actually, no, I think it's the red one. The red one I think has a second spike developing. Uh, so she's happy. She's doing really good. Uh, that's my first Ranko Stylus flower spike. I know that they can get like three times longer than that, which is pretty amazing. Um, but I think that that's pretty good for a first time spike for me. Um, this is the red one. Uh, by the way, the fragrance on these, it's not great. <laughs> There's definitely a fragrance, um, but it's not, um, it's not sweet and pleasant. It has a sweet undertone, but it's very, it's not soapy. It's almost like a cleaning product. Um, so it's not like terrible, but it's, it's not something you want to stick your nose in and take a deep whiff. Um, again, these flowers are such a deep burgundy, like a purpley burgundy color, and it's not coming through on, um, the video, unfortunately. And also the, the, the pink spot, it's more like a fuchsia pink, like a purple, almost like a hot color. 
Um, so I wish that the real color would come through. Um, she hasn't really developed any new roots since I got her, uh, but she's pretty happy. Um, her leaves are nice and fleshy. Uh, she's working on another leaf down in there, if you can see. Uh, so is the pink one. So they're both very happy. And I love looking at these blooms. I hope they stick around for a while. Um, this is my Miltoniopsis. I have killed several of these. <laughs> Miltoniopsis and I are not friends. Kind of like me and Minnie Fowls. Um, but she's not dead yet. And I've had her for a couple of months. Um, I am keeping her in a rather chilly window. And she seems to like it. Um, the window probably gets down into the high 50s at night. And she's staying green and healthy. Her new growths are continuing to grow. And something that has never happened for me before, new roots. <laughs> I have never gotten a Miltoniopsis to get new roots. I've only ever killed them. So usually I'll get a Miltoniopsis. If it has green roots, they die and then the plant dies. But this is actually pushing out new roots since I got it. So I'm pretty psyched about that. Um, this is the Catlia, the first Catlia that I ever bought. It's a bag baby. And why I decided that I wanted to rescue a Catlia as the first Catlia I ever got, I have no idea. But I got this orchid. It was just these two pseudobulbs. It was put on a shelf and pretty much forgotten about. I mean, this was so wrinkled. There were no roots and wrinkled pseudobulbs. And it was in a terrible, terrible state. Literally no roots. I mean, that was what it had that right there <laughs> and look at it now it got a new growth new roots very proud of this orchid again this orchid is probably not going to bloom for years but i'm very proud of the fact that i saved it so it's amazing what orchids can bounce back from it's amazing what they can go through and still push push on so very exciting uh, this is one of actually my newer uh, this is a catenara I think I think that's what that abbreviation means um, this is one of the orchids I was really upset when I got it because the the newest growth was was nice and vigorous and big but obviously it had been injured in transport and the leaves were broken. So I've kind of stabilized them so that they won't rip further. And, you know, when you get that kind of disappointment, sometimes you kind of lose interest. So I really haven't been paying attention to this plant. But today I decided I was going to clean all the glass beads and, you know, put them in better pots for, you know, their growth patterns and all that kind of stuff. And as I was cleaning, looky there, a new growth. <laughs> So I guess it its leaves breaking like that didn't really affect it. So behind my back, it developed a new growth. So I'm kind of excited. Again, you can, <laughs> what, what an orchid will deal with. They're pretty resilient, neglecting everything. Okay, so these are my dendrobiums and I'm, I'm just including, and there's no real progress. I mean, this one is not a deciduous dendrobium and it, it has its terminal leaf now, but it grew quite a bit. I mean, when I got it, it was about yay high. So all of this, it grew in my care. Um, and I really love this orchid. I mean, it's got like little black hairs all over the stem. So I think it's so cute. I don't think that this is going to bloom for a couple of years. Um, and I don't actually know where they bloom from, if it's from the apex or if it's, you know, from nodes uh, along the sides of the orchid. I'm not really sure. I kind of have to do a little more research on that part of this orchid. Um, but my other dendrobium is a deciduous dendrobium. And this is um, a species, actually. So that's an interesting choice for your second dendrobium. Um, it has spiked before, as you can see, on older pseudobulbs. And it did do the whole deciduous thing. It did drop quite a few of its leaves. It still has a few up here. Um, I am keeping water. 
Now, the, the roots are not green because of the water in the pot. The roots are green because I actually watered it today. I do, once a week, take it and just really quickly run water right over the roots. Um, that may be the wrong thing to do to get blooms, but you know what? I am so new to dendrobiums, I don't want to kill this plant before I have an opportunity to learn about it. So I am watering it once a week. And when I say watering, again, I'm not soaking the orchid. I'm just running water, warm water over the, the roots so that it hydrates. And as you can see, I still do have quite a few live roots in there. And then before I put it back into the glass, I put a little bit of water in the bottom of the glass so it's not touching the roots. You can see none of these roots are touching the water. But this way there's still some humidity in the glass so that the roots, although they do dry out, trust me, these roots, by the time I'm going to water these next week, they are going to be brittle. <laughs> um, they do dry out. But as I just want to keep some hydration because when a dendrobium goes through their dry period, it's not like there's no moisture at all. You know, there's there's morning dew and there's mist and all that kind of stuff. So I don't want to just let this orchid become you know, die basically because it has no moisture at all. So I am keeping some humidity in the glass by putting water in there, but the water is in no way touching the roots and we'll see what happens. Again, I'm not expecting my first dendrobium, deciduous dendrobium to bloom the first year that I have it. I do see where it would bloom from. I don't know if I'm going to get this to focus. No, probably not. Let me see if I can find a good one with my eyes before I try to bring you in. Okay, so there's one right there. Oops, wrong spot. Um, you see that little bump? That's where it would bloom from. And I do see them all up and down this stem. So it is possible that this dendrobium can bloom from this bloom spike. I mean, from uh, this cane. But I doubt it's going to happen. <laughs> It's my first deciduous dendrobium, and I really don't know as much as I should. It was kind of an impulse buy because I really did like the blooms, but I don't know enough about dendrobiums to really get this to bloom. I'm keeping it in nice, strong light, and I'm really, I'm keeping, I mean, my instinct is to water this plant, and I'm really not. I mean, once a week, like I said, I run some water over the roots just to keep it from completely drying out. Um, but by the time that comes around again, these roots are completely dry, like straw. So, and also the old canes, they were plump when I got them and they are desiccating. So this orchid is not getting a lot of moisture. And I hope that I'm doing the right thing there. Um, there's such a fine balance of what's too much and what's enough. So anyways, that is my update for today. I do, um, someone recently asked me about my fertilizing routine, so I do also want to post um, a video about that. And also, um, I kind of got carried away with these orchids, um, so I didn't really check on my cattleyas. Um, so they're not really included. There's a few cattleyas included, but most of my cattleyas, which are in my grow space in my bathroom, I haven't even looked at yet. <laughs> so there might be some cool things that I find there, and I'll... I'll you know, do a little update on that. But otherwise, I hope everyone is doing well and enjoying their winter season. And I will talk to everyone next time.